Good afternoon. The July 4th holiday isn't letting up for our first responders. Crews in southwest Denver are responding to a house fire sparked just within the last hour. This is the Sky 9 view from Alamo Drive and Harlan. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kim Christensen. I'm Lauren Scafidi. We want to get right out to Harlan Street. Nine News reporter Evan Krugel is live at the scene. Evan, first responders there have really had their hands full. They're staying busy with all of the fires that have sparked the last 24 hours. Yeah, they were very busy last night. They are very busy again today. This fire started about an hour ago. It is under control, but still a very active uh, fire presence here. I want to step out of the way and give you a live look. As you mentioned, this is at Alamo and Harlan, just north of Littleton. You can see these two homes that are severely damaged. We're told the fire started in one of them and then spread to the other. This is right near Bulls Reservoir. They do not know what started the fire at this point, but you can see significant, significant damage to two different homes here, two garages as well, significantly impacted by this fire. You mentioned that response from firefighters, over 80 firefighters here from multiple different agencies. I'm told this location sits in a weird pocket where Denver, South Metro and West Metro all converge on one neighborhood. Each one of those um, fire departments has about a third of this neighborhood to handle. So this is a Denver fire, but they say they received significant help from South Metro Fire. That's why there were 80 firefighters here this afternoon. Now you can see all of these tall trees surrounding these homes. Firefighters say they had a number of obstacles they had to deal with while attacking this place. Those are definitely additional hazards that our crews have to navigate through, especially with the aerial operations. Um, you know, if they have to, they can go up and cut it with chainsaws, but you got to be pretty strategic where they place the rigs. And as you can see, our, our people do an amazing job. Now, there were visible flames as uh, early as 45 minutes ago. Those are now gone. You can see firefighters have moved back off of these homes and are now in that overhaul stage of this process. Lauren, you mentioned it's been a busy weekend already for firefighters. Multiple agencies responding to multiple fires involving fireworks. We do not know the cause of this fire at this point, but we'll have much more on that busy weekend coming up at 4.30. For now, we're live. Evan Krugel, 9 News. Hmm. Such a mess, and as you see right there, they made quick work of it, but Evan, so many of these neighborhoods, we live in condensed neighborhoods, you know? The house next to you is, it feels like you can almost reach out your window and touch it. Yeah, and when you talk about these big trees, that's another one of those hazards that firefighters can deal with. It makes it difficult not only to get in to attack the fire, but also there's that risk of it jumping from home to home. Now, they do not know exactly Again, which home it started in or how it was able to get from home to home. But you mentioned all those hazards they had to deal with. Certainly a quick response and a big response to get this fire under control. All right. Thank you. Evan Krugel reporting for us in Denver at that fire in southwest Denver. Yeah. Moving on, the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office says as many as 50 people were a part of a big fight that broke out at Cherry Creek State Park yesterday. It happened at the Swim Beach area. The park's chief ranger says two people were arrested and a ranger was assaulted while trying to make an arrest. That person is okay. Right now, we don't know what led up to the fight. It was a busy day at Cherry Creek State Park yesterday. They hit their max capacity just after noon. Right now, Commerce City Police are looking for a driver that hit two people walking. It happened just before 10 o'clock last night on East 64th Avenue as a group of people were walking through a field to watch fireworks. The SUV hit two men before driving off. Police say that it appears to be a targeted attack. The SUV was recovered overnight in Aurora and police are still working and identifying that driver. Let's take a live look outside on this Friday afternoon. We have really enjoyed a break from the heat this week. Only a few more days left in the 80s. We'd like to stay here. We'd like to be stuck in the 80s, if you will. Um, but then we can't, Lauren, because then we're going back to, you know, 90s and stuff. Yeah, we're going to yeah. creep right back up there. Yeah, that's exactly right. Tomorrow we're going to be back in the low 90s. It'll only last one day, but we're expecting storms on the back end of that once we get through Sunday. Now, right now we're going to enjoy the rest of our mostly dry, sunny, mild afternoon out there. Today looks a lot like what we saw yesterday, except we are watching for some very spotty showers to the south. Now, a lot of these were expected, especially down near Trinidad, but we're just going to continue to be mostly dry across the state with, again, the exception of a pop-up shower and storm here and there. 
air. Coming up in my full seven day forecast, we're going to talk more about the clear and breezy evening ahead. We're also going to talk about the warm weather that will last temporarily before a cool down comes along with some storms for our Sunday forecast. I'll have details on everything we can expect in my seven day forecast. You'll certainly want to stay tuned. Thanks, Lauren. A high school grad from Steamboat Springs died yesterday while visiting friends in Virginia. 18-year-old Jesse Hamrick was electrocuted in a lake early yesterday morning. He recently graduated from Steamboat Springs High School. He's the son of the principal. The Steamboat community is planning a prayer vigil tonight at 6 o'clock at Holy Name Catholic Church in Steamboat. A man from Aurora drowned after falling into the South Platte River near Deckers. That's according to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. It happened as his family was celebrating the 4th of July. The Sheriff's Office says 57-year-old Jorge Ramirez Flores slipped on the rocks and fell into the water. A family member tried to pull him out, but the current was too fast and swept him away. An update this afternoon as we learn more about the crash that killed four people in Morgan County. Today we learned that it was two adults and two young children involved. The crash happened Wednesday afternoon about 20 miles south of Brush. Colorado State Patrol says a UTV didn't stop at a stop sign and a truck hit it. A 22 year old man and woman were killed as well as a two year old and a one year old. The person driving the truck went to the hospital with serious injuries. CSP says alcohol is being investigated as being a factor in the crash. New video shows an unlikely suspect that caused a house fire in Colorado Springs last month. Take a look at this. Home security video shows the moment the dog's ac dog accidentally turned on the stove. Seconds after the dog walked away, boxes sitting on top of the stove caught on fire. The whole kitchen became engulfed in smoke. Alerted by a high heat notice from their Apple HomePod, the homeowner said they were able to get out, put the flames out themselves before the fire department arrived. No one was hurt and the dog was okay too. A park ranger is recovering after getting shot at Yellowstone National Park. It happened yesterday morning. Rangers got a report that a person with a gun was making threats in the Canyon Village area. When they got there, they tried to contact the shooter, and that's when they say the gunfire started. The shooter died. The ranger that was hurt is in stable condition, recovering in the hospital. The FBI is now leading the investigation into that shooting. In New York, at least three people were killed when a truck driver drove into a crowded park. Last night, the driver ran a stop sign and plowed into the park. The park was filled with people just waiting to watch the fireworks. 11 people were hit. Investigators say a mother and her son were among the three people killed. The driver was arrested and charged with driving under the influence. Hurricane Barrel is now a tropical storm as it's pushed its way off the coast. The storm has already, though, claimed the lives of 11 people as it swept across the Caribbean. Earlier today, the storm made landfall on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 2 storm. The popular tourist destination of Cancun experienced lashing winds and rain as the storm moved through the region. High winds began to slow as the system moved over land, but we're still reaching 100 miles per hour. Barrel is expected to move back over water again, where it may, may regain some strength before making second landfall on the Gulf Coast near the Mexico-Texas border later this weekend. People in Texas are prepping for Barrel to bring lots of rain. This morning, Corpus Christi city workers distributed sandbags and ran out, they ran out in just one hour. Some 10,000 bags were given out.